22 psychology tricks that work on anyone. Number 22, Ben Franklin Effect. This psychology trick for getting someone to like you is dubbed the Ben Franklin Effect. It stems from a story about Franklin using this technique to get a difficult political rival to warm up to him. Franklin knew he needed his rival's alliance in the near future, so he kindly asked him could he borrow a special rare book that his rival owned. Ultimately, they became lifelong friends. The idea is that people will start to like you if they do a favor for you. You heard me. Just kindly ask someone to do something simple for you. If they do it, they will usually be inclined to do another. His or her mind will tell them that they like you, basically, because human beings do nice things for people they like. Number 21. Wordplay. Dating can be rough. There are even buzzwords like ghosting and others to describe the scene. So it helps to have a good trick to help find out if someone really likes you. Here it goes. When they speak, choose a word in your mind, and every time your crush uses the word or phrase, smile and nod. If they like you, they will start saying the word or phrase all the time. It sounds strange, but try it and let us know if it worked. Number 20. Dad Knows Best You can tell your friend to ice their swollen ankle, but she might just let it go in one ear and out the other. If you really want her to take you seriously, tell her that your father taught it to you. No one really questions the advice of dad, or even mom for that matter. In fact, when you trot out, my mom or dad always taught me, you're more likely to be taken seriously. Number 19. Rock, paper, scissors. Do you always get stuck doing the chores because your roommate insists on playing rock, paper, scissors to determine who must do them? Now you can turn the tables. Just before playing, ask them random questions like, hey, did it rain today? Or anything you can think of. It will result in confusing them and they will most likely choose scissors. So you can comfortably throw rock each time for the win. Number 18. Part the crowds. Crowded, busy streets, crammed full of hustling people can be a total drag, especially before coffee. If you're trying to get where you're going and don't want to dodge people to do it, try this handy trick. People tend to look other people in the eyes in crowded places to determine which direction they're going. You know when you awkwardly step left and they step right and you nearly crash into each other? <laughs> yeah, good times. Well, if you want to avoid all that, simply look right in front of you in the direction that you're headed. They'll see that you're not looking to go left or right, and so people will move out of the way to avoid running into you. Number 17. The Power of Choice This trick works beautifully on kids in particular. If you have or are around kids, no doubt you've asked them to put on their shoes, only to be met by tears and chaos. <sighs> Next time, instead of asking, pose things as a choice. You'll be amazed at how well that works. For example, instead of saying, Put on your shoes now! Try this. Which shoes do you want to wear? The pink ones or the sparkly ones? It will result in a clear choice because your child will feel like she is in charge and have some control over their decisions instead of being told what to do. It can be quite empowering for the little ones. Try it out with food, too. If she's complaining about dinner, smile and ask sweetly if she'd like two carrots or four carrots. Whichever number she picks is insignificant. She'll be eating carrots, and for that, you can pat yourself right on the back. Number 16. Give him the old Huck Finn. Huck Finn got his friends to help him paint that fence by telling them it was fun. It was a nice bit of psychology that helped him get everyone else to do his work. You can do the same with your friends. So if you run into your friends as you get back from the supermarket, as you're in the midst of talking, hand over a bag of stuff and they'll take it without noticing. It works fabulously on people you're close to. For people you don't know as well, it might cause them some confusion, but it still usually works and it's fun to watch their reactions. Number 15. Warm hands, warm heart. That's what they've said for years. So when you're going to an important meeting, an interview, a first date, or anything where you'll be meeting people for the first time, and handshakes are likely, make sure your hands are warm enough. A warm handshake brings about a friendly atmosphere. And cold hands? <laughs> you guessed it, uncomfortable first impression. Almost like nails on a chalkboard for your soul. Number 14. Say it again, Sam. 
When someone is talking to you like a friend or a prospective lover, or even a superior you want to favor you, paraphrase what they just said to you. They will feel as though you are a great listener. However, you don't want to go overboard or you'll make them think you're imitating them or being sarcastic. Do it with key points. And in business, that's a great tactic because it also allows for any misinterpretation to be cleared up immediately. Number 13, help me, please. Want help from someone? It's just so simple to ask. Really, it works. Just start off your request with, I need your help. A respectful direct request for help is powerful. Most people won't refuse because they hate feeling guilty about not helping someone. Number 12. Convert the haters. Do you have someone at the office that you think hates you? Try this easy trick. Ask them if you can borrow a pen or pencil. While people don't usually help those they dislike, when you ask for something so small, it's hard to say no. It looks petty if they do, especially if they have a whole bunch of pens or pencils on their desk, and if other co-workers can see you. Of course, return it when you're finished. The goal or hope here is for that person to eventually surmise that you are not all that bad of a person after all, and ideally, your relations might improve. Let us know if you try this. I like to see the good in people and am hopeful this will work. Number 11. Get the 411. You can get information from your friends, even if they're reluctant to tell you. Ask a question, and if they seem as though they're hiding something, just keep eye contact and stay silent for several seconds. That's the kind of uncomfortable silence Uma Thurman's character Mia Wallace talks about with Vincent Vega in the film Jack Rabbit Slim's Scene from Pulp Fiction. It works. It gets them talking. This is a good sales tool for negotiating as well. Number 10. Stop conflict with food. Food. Is there anything it can't do? If things seem tense with your group or even just one-on-one, -on -one, eat. Literally, start eating in front of them. Food makes us feel comfortable in our environment. So if you've made someone mad, start to eat something at that moment, and this will help subdue conflict. There was an actual case where a guy eating pizza stepped between two guys that were fighting and saved the day. Well, pizza actually saved the day, but still. Number 9. Stalk Your Stalker if you feel like you're being watched, you can try this simple trick to catch someone in the act. Since yawns are highly contagious, just yawn a couple times. Make sure you can be seen doing your yawn, then look around and see if anyone behind or near you is yawning. If there are no yawners back there, then probably no one was watching you. Test it on that guy you like at work. If you're not sure if he's interested in you, just yawn and keep watch. If you catch him catching your yawns, he's definitely paying attention to you. <sighs> Jeez, I actually just yawned. Just talking about yawns, how about you? <laughs> Number 8. Stop the music. Here's what to do when that awful, annoying song from the radio comes on again. We're looking at you, bleep, insert the name of your annoying song. Or maybe your kids keep belting out that line about letting stuff go, yet again. These songs wedge themselves deep into the fibers of your brain, which sings it back to you over and over and over and over <laughs> at 3 a.m. Well, you can stop the madness. To get rid of these songs, as well as all terrible songs in the world, think of the ending of the song. Your mind will feel complete, thinking the song has finished as far as it knows, then your brain can go on to focus on other things, like counting sheep. <laughs> Number 7. All aboard. If you want everyone to agree with the things you're saying, start nodding your head while you say the things you want them to agree with. The nodding subconsciously gets the other person to believe that the things you're saying are true. Try not to laugh, but they will also begin to nod. But more importantly, they will agree with you. It's useful for making a good impression, but use this trick wisely. You can't use it on everyone. Number 6. Another conflict killer. You don't need food for this one. When you gather with a group and you think someone might start a fight with you, choose to sit next to that person. It seems counterintuitive to sit next to someone you feel might be aggressive toward you, but it becomes very awkward for them to do it if you're right next to them instead of on the other side of the table. They have to turn their body and being so close to them makes things more personal. Plus, they can't hide in the group circle, so it changes the dynamic. 
Number five, aim high. For those times when you want to negotiate more money or more of anything really, start off with an insanely higher amount than what you want to ask for. The person will of course say no if the sum is high enough, then ask again for the amount you really want. They'll feel so bad for telling you no the first time that they'll most likely agree to it this time around. It's been called establishing a psychological high. It works like a charm. People like to feel like they've also accomplished something in the deal too. So they will feel good about themselves if they're able to negotiate you down. So remember to start high so you both win. Number four, remember me. One trick to make people remember you favorably is to use the mind to your advantage. We often remember the beginning and ending of something, but the middle becomes a bit of a blur. For interviews, try to be the first or the last one interviewed. And on dates, try choosing a time at the beginning or ending of the day. Make sure you are at your best at the beginning and ending of these times too. Also, this trick works on studying, which is why experts recommend you only study for 20 minutes at a time before taking a short break instead of studying for hours on end. Number three, mirror, mirror. Build trust quickly and effectively by mirroring the body image of the person you're talking to. Just do it in a subtle way or they'll feel like you're mocking them. By staying subtle, you can seem in sync and when people feel you're in sync, they're more likely to trust you. This works in person and it also works on the phone. Mirror the speed and nuances of the person you want to trust you. Number two, need for speed. Want to really bond with your new crush? Do something that spikes the adrenaline together. It could be simply seeing a scary movie. Experiencing an adrenaline rush with that person will convince them that they are truly enjoying their time being with you. They may very well like you prior to this, but the adrenaline rush builds a bond and that's a good thing. Added bonus, you can see how they handle stressful situations. Number one, get the last laugh. Ever sit down at an office meeting that's all laughs? Watch who each person in the group looks to first. Whoever they look at first is the person whose company they enjoy the most. And that could be very telling for office relationships or who the boss favors. Please hit the like and subscribe buttons to help us grow so we can keep bringing you new content. Thanks for watching.